Hi everyone, in this video we'll look at a simple Java program to determine if an integer input by the user is even or odd. So here is the code for finding out if a number input by the user is even or odd. Now, once again, as I mentioned in my previous video, you will have to create a public class. So the public class that I've created here is check even odd. Okay. Now within that public class, we have to have the main method. So public static void main string args. So this is going to be the feature of all Java programs that you write. Okay. So these four lines right there. Now, the thing that you realize here is we have in line three an import statement. Now, what is an import statement? Mean? We are actually importing the scanner class. Now, why is that going to be needed? Okay, so that is something that we're going to learn in today's video. Okay, so first let's go to line nine where we have declared a num, which is an integer. Okay, so num is a variable of type int. Now, once again, we have system.out.println here, which is something that just prints stuff out onto the screen of the user. So it asks the user to enter an integer. Okay, that's what line 10 does. Now, when the user is going to input an integer, you have to hold it or grab that integer that's been entered by the user. Now, these two lines here help you get the input from the user. Now, once again, I would like to emphasize that these things like trying to get inputs from the user might actually slow you down in learning Java because from my perspective, these are not that important. You will get a hang of these once you know how to write good code. So for now, what you just need to know is how to get an input from the user. What's the code that has to be written? And you just kind of have to repeat this code. For example, if you want to print out something out, you use system.out.println. Now getting some an input from the user is a little more tricky. So what you have to do is you have to write statement like this scanner input equals new scanner and within parentheses you have system dot in now this will seem like crazy to you but what does this even mean now scanner is this class so we imported this scanner class okay now you don't know anything about classes in java but don't worry we'll we'll get to that later in this introductory course we will just learn how to use java and how to code in java okay so now what you're trying to do is you're going to create an object or an instance of the scanner class. Okay, now it's just an instance, so you want to create it. Now to do that, this is the code that you have to write. Okay, whenever you are trying to create an instance, you have to call scanner, which is because that's the class. The instance that you have named is input. You could name it anything that you want. Okay, and you are creating a new type of it. So you're going to call equals new scanner. Okay. So you're calling the scanner class to create an object of class scanner. Now, because you want to actually get an input from the user here to the class scanner class, we have to pass this argument called system.in. See that system.in is very similar to system.out. So you're going to get something from the user. So you have to pass system.in. This is just how the code is good. Is written. So we can't do anything about it. We just have to understand this. So if you start using this, you will be able to get uh, stuff from the user. Okay. Now in the next line, what you have is whatever input the user is going to give, you are going to store it in this variable num. Note that you remember that in line nine, you declared num as an integer. So num equals now input dot next int. Okay. So what does this mean? So you just had created this variable input in which, which is an object of type scanner. Okay. Now, these objects have bulk of methods that are inbuilt in them. We don't need to know that. What you need to know at this point is because you're going to try to get the next integer, you're going to call this next int method of this input class. Okay. So it is just a little confusing. So input is this object and you're just going to call it. So for now, what I recommend is you just understand this is how you have to write to get an input from the user. Okay. 
So now that we've passed that stage of trying to get input from the user, we have, let's just get into the logic. This is what is most important when you're learning to code. So now you've gotten this input. Now you have to check if this is an even number or an odd number, okay? Now, how do you go about doing that? So logic is pretty simple. If the number is divisible by two, then it is an even number. Otherwise, it's an odd number, okay? So how do we go about doing that, okay? So that is what we are trying to do. So here we have a new logic called if and else. It's something that we are learning for the first time. So let's try to understand this. So we are going to have this case here. So if, if the number is divisible by two, then the remainder is going to be zero, right? Otherwise, the remainder is going to be one. So if it's going to be divisible by two, we're going to print this thing, okay? That is, the number is even, system.out.print that, okay? Else, we're going to print out that the number is odd. Now, let's try to understand line 18. So this is the if condition, if the number is divisible by two. To do that, what do we do? So we have this if, this is a statement that you've learned, if comes uh, in pair with else, you can pair it with else. So this is two conditions. If something happens, you're going to print this out, line 19. Otherwise, you're going to print line 21 out. So now let's look at num divided by 0 equal to equal to 0. Divided by 2 equal to equal to 0. Is it division? Not really. What we are doing here is modulo division. So when number is modulo, divided by two, we are looking we're going to get the remainder. This thing is not a simple division here. It is modulo. So if num is say five and you modulo divide five by two, you're going to look at the remainder, which is one. Similarly, if say num is 20, and you divide it by two, you're going to get the remainder. So modulo division will give you the remainder. That's what this is going to give us. So we look at the remainder, the remainder is zero, the number entered is even, otherwise the number entered is odd, okay? So as I mentioned, I'm going to use jdoodle to basically execute this program. So I've written this, and this is going to be interactive. So I'm going to execute it, I've switched this button on. So I'm, I've already executed this, let's execute it one more time. So clicking on this execute button, so it asks me to enter an integer. I enter seven. Now, just tells me the number entered is odd. Let's once again try this. Let's, uh, it asks me to enter an integer. Let's enter 10. Tells me that the number entered is even, okay? So the important things that we learned in this piece of code, okay? The most important thing lies in lines 18 to 21, which is if and else. So that's an important logic that you've learned. If something is happening, you go to line 19. Otherwise, which is the else, you go to line 21. So if the number is divisible by two, which we get here by num modulo divided by two, we are looking at the remainder, then we say that the number is even. Otherwise, we say that the number is odd. The other thing that we learned was how to input something from the user using the keyboard. So, so here, what I just want to emphasize is the important thing when you start learning Java is to learn the logic and not to get bogged down by stuff like, like we can see here in lines 13 and 14, which is try to get uh, inputs from the user. We should focus more on the logic. I hope this video helped you understand the logic, also helped you understand how to get inputs from the user. And in the next video, we'll some, learn something much more interesting. Thank you for watching.